Parents of Earth. Thank you, Chewbacca. Parents. We traveled from the swamps of Dagobah. Oh, where are you? <coughs> Help you again. Yes. To the battlefields of Ice Planet Hoth. Oh, my. Now from Star Wars and the Empire Strikes Back comes Kenner's Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back Collection. A toy universe of heroes, villains, fantastic space vehicles, and faraway galaxies. Oh! I was just getting to that. These are action figures, 47 in all. Fantastic. Look, it's at at. All terrain armored transport. Easy, Chewbacca. Here's Dagobah, training grounds for Master Luke. That's Slave One with frozen hand solo. And this is Pop Wampa, the snow beast with Tonton from the ice planet. Remember then, there's only one Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back collection from Kenner. So, Rose, how are you? I'm okay. How are you guys doing? Good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm having a problem with this. Subject. Uh-oh. What subject? With Christmas gifts? Yeah. I'm I'm <laughs> not remembering a whole lot of them. I, I thought I was that way too, but then three like jumped out at me. Uh, okay. So are you going to be able to? Well, I mean, you're kind of in at this point. You don't have much of a choice. You're in for the ride. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm sure I'll think of something. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll I'll spend something out of this. No (laughs) idea what it is. And and then, of course, you realize I have to put this down on paper as well. Yeah, the the blog, yeah. Blog. Yep. Yeah. Well, I've got three or four good entries, and I've got pictures. So if you want to add them as part of your glob, blog, my your glob, <laughs> your, your glob, glob. <laughs> part of your glob. That's, that's kind of what it is right now. It's the glob. Yeah. Or, or, or the, the, there's an idea. One one entry or. comes from Scott. One entry comes from me. One entry comes from you. So you're only doing uh, obligated one. to do. What? Sweet. That would be awesome. Does that work? Thank you. Yeah. So Thank that, you so much. Yeah, that way uh, you don't have to, you know, spend that much time on the glob. glob. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we should start renaming them all globs. I think that's awesome. <laughs> oh my god, that's too funny. And I and I've got two I got two really cool entries uh, from other people. Uh, one from Tristan, and I, I even pinned it on my profile, and everybody like retweeted it. And liked it, but no one participated. So I just really want to punch him over. I've got a, I've got a couple on Facebook that I post. I just like twenty minutes ago. My husband has weird... a killer. Oh, he has like a good one. This. Yeah, I asked him, and he's like, "Oh, I don't know." And then he started to think. He went, "Oh, you know, there was that year that I got." And I went, awesome, because who doesn't ever, like, want one of those if you're a guy? So it's kind of like that segue into manhood type of gift. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I there there's one thing that we got to take care of first before we yeah. jump into the topic. Um, and it was actually our uh, honorary member, Frederick. So okay. for our listeners, in case you don't remember Frederick, you should go back, re-listen to our uh, uh, Rick Moranis icon episode, and you'll know who we're talking about when we say Frederick. So right. his feedback that he wrote to us, uh, and this was yesterday, uh, is great John Candy episode. A lot of love for mm-hmm. real life, beardless Santa. I don't think he ever played something like Santa, but he would have been great. He always had this cozy vibe about him. Sad, went, sad he went away too so soon. Hmm. So, you just thought, uh, you know, he, Frederick was kind of hanging out on uh, listening to John Candy for a little bit, kind of giving it the anticipation thing because he's a big fan. So mm-hmm. it just took him a little while to to listen to it, and he finally did. 
And so I just thought you guys would like the feedback. Thank cool. you. Appreciate that. Yep. We like Frederick a lot. We do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very cool. Thank you, Frederick. Appreciate that. And then a previous email that he had sent, we've been exchanging emails, like I said before. Um, and he said, Blinky for an 80s big bad guy. That was awesome. So a little <laughs> shout out to me for mm-hmm. the uh, the bad guy pa- uh, podcast where I brought up Blinky as one of my top three. So I'm glad that uh, he appreciated that. Yeah. That was very creative, I have to admit. Thank you. That was a good one. <laughs> I, it it took me by surprise for sure, and then Paul with pole position, the car. Yeah, well, yeah, when we're going into the cars on that. We one, went right? into the cars. Yeah, you, know, yeah. uh, you guys, you guys have all been thinking outside the box. I'm like all mainstream, and you know, even Rose last week with your Christmas picks, they they were a little outside the norm. I'm picking like every most popular Christmas movie there is. Yeah, and, and you're picking these great ones that are. I mean. That are kind of the hidden gems, you know. You guys all have yeah. the hidden hidden gems. It's great, and, and that's the reason why you I posted the uh, claim the claymation raisins oh, yeah, 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 thing. Yeah. I posted yeah. that because I had edited that show that you you two did, and I was yeah. like, oh, I got to see this. And then you know, so of course, <laughs> once I saw it, then I posted it. So yeah, but you always have the Star Wars. Oh, Isn't true. It? Yeah. Life day. Oh yeah. yeah. Life day. It's a good day. Life day. <laughs> but you know, one that was pre eighties that I don't think gets a lot of attention. I don't know if anybody yeah. remembers it. Is uh, Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. Oh uh, my goodness. I no love idea. that one. You know, I just watched Zootopia not too long ago. And one of the animals that was missing that, you know, bunny hops, you know, was you know, trying to help find mm-hmm. was Emmett Otter. Oh, really? Yeah, his name was like Emmett Otterton or something like that. And I went, <laughs> oh my goodness, what a nice little Easter egg to Emmett Otter's Joke Bank Christmas. Huh. My son yeah. loves that. He loves that show. It's just, it's just a hoedown of happiness, basically, is what it is. It is. Yeah. Well done, Dave. Yeah, I think that was 1977 or 78, so that, that, that's definitely pre-80s there. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. All right, so I think we're going to jump right into our uh, our 80s Christmas gifts. Sure. So let's kick this off. For the Romans, give me sight beyond sight. Starfighter, you have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Sewer and the Kodan Armada. Get ready, prepare for blast off. Hey, Doc, we better back up. We don't have enough roads to get up to 88. Roads? Well, we're going, we don't need roads. Remember, no matter where you go, there you are. This is 80s Reboot Overdrive Podcast. like so dated hello this is 80s reboot overdrive and i am dave online i've got 80s music girl rose hello and 80s outer verse scott hey guys you know and what we're doing is we have another one of these great crossover blog podcast events that we engaged with some of our fellow 80s bloggers and actually another podcaster now too uh that you know we all decided that we're going to do the same topic you know around you know the blog entries and 
you know, while we're going to be talking about the subject, we have another podcaster that's going to be doing the, doing a show on the same subject. So it's really cool. We're kind of expanding our 80s empire, 80s alliance, 80s nation, whatever you want to call it. But we have a lot of great people that we're collaborating with that – you know, we're able to link together these articles, and I, I, I can't thank them enough. Um, so the topic that we decided upon for this, for December, is the top three 80s Christmas gifts. So the way that I had suggested it was that the topic would be either a gift that was either given to you or a gift that was received or maybe one that you had wanted that you didn't get. Uh, so that was kind of the criteria for the articles, for the blogs, and, uh, you know, the, the subject matter of how I'm looking at, you know, for this podcast. Uh, so uh, in this case, Rose, Scott, and myself have our top three 80s Christmas gifts. But before we start jumping into our picks, we want to talk about our participants. Uh, so the first one, Rediscover the 80s which is uh, rediscoverthe80s.com. They actually uh, have a great blog out there, and then they're also going to be doing on their Memory Jogger podcast this same subject. Uh, another one that is participating uh, as before with the top three cars, ouijimidget.wordpress.com. Uh, Gil out there is writing great content. Loved the content that, you know, the pics that uh, she had for her uh, her blog last time. So I can't wait to see what comes up this time. Uh, a good friend of ours in the UK, killerkitch.wordpress.com. Uh, so that's another great blog. Fantastic content. Looking forward to that one. We've also got return to the 80s.wordpress.com. Uh, once again, these are people that we've done some, you know, that were on, uh, Paul was on our last show where we did our top three cars, and then I know Scott's been jumping in and talking to them on their podcast. Um, and then, of course, our own blog, which is southgatemediagroup.com slash 80s reboot blog, which is now being taken care of by Rose. So tons and tons of great content that's being created, and we're all linking together and sharing our love affair with the 80s and, you know, uniting with these common themes, common topics. So all of it is very awesome stuff. Whew, that was a lot. That was a lot. I, I, I was, I was okay. kind of excited about that. So I wanted to just give shout outs to those people because they are awesome, all of them. Yes. It is good. It, you know, we're expanding the 80s universe. Yeah. It, it's a beautiful thing. It totally is. I kind of feel like I kind of feel like we are the world. Ooh, you are the world. Precursor. Wow. Nice. Just a little, just oh, a little oh, hint. Oh, that was a little, little hint, hint of one of yours. Uh oh. Uh, maybe not mine. Oh. <laughs> just saying. Okay. All right. Just stand by. Okay. <laughs> you. <laughs> we are not the me. world. <laughs> just yeah. I okay. I got some input. All right. Okay. All right. So um, I covered all the participants, right? Did, did I miss anybody? I hope I didn't. No, I don't think you did. Okay, cool. Very, very cool. Um, all right. So we're going to go ahead and get started with uh, our picks. Um, Scott, go ahead and kick us off. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. cool. Um, I, I need a disclaimer first. Um, m my family did well when I was this age, so I got some gifts that were a little more than what some people might have gotten. So I'm just saying, don't be shocked. <laughs> I didn't get a car or anything. It's not like that. But, uh... I'm going to say one of the one of my most favorite things I got I think it was 85 1985 So that would have put that would have put you at how old? 
Um, I would have been 17. Okay. All right. Or or so. Okay. Six, yeah, 17. Uh, let's see. Wait. Christmas. Christmas of the 85 would have put me at yeah at 17. I was about to turn 18 because I would graduate in 86. I got a members only black leather jacket. Whoa. And it was sweet. <laughs> I I I I looked it up. I'm like, man, that really was a cool jacket. I I was I had I had the coolest jacket in uh, in in school, man. So I I was very I was very happy about that one. That was really cool. And I don't even know if I remember asking for it to be leather, but somehow I ended up with it as leather, and it was. It, and it fit me perfectly because I was, you know, heavy metal dude. So I needed leather, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I needed a black leather jacket, and that was that was uh, that. That's really one of the most memorable things that I have. In fact, I have a picture, and I, I can't find it right now. I, I was looking for it, uh, but I have a picture of me in the jacket at Christmas time. Holding up some other gift, I can't remember what the other gift was. The jacket was the thing, you know. That was that was it. So, um, and I, I think it was from uh, I think it was from my grandparents. So my, my mom, my mom must have told them, you know, that was what was kind of in the thing. And, in and the nothing, list. nothing screams heavy metal like members only jacket. No, you know what? It really <laughs> members only actually. Really wasn't. Although, although let let me throw this at you. I'm watching. I'm watching Spinal Tap just over the last couple of days. Right. And in Spinal Tap, the uh, one of the characters, Christopher Guest character, mm-hmm. um, is wearing a leather black leather jacket that's very similar to my members only jacket with the with the neck strap versus the collars. Oh, I think I remember that. So, <laughs> so you know, I, I may have been like Spinal Tap at so, one point. So, so it's in Spinal Tap that makes it legit. So I got gotcha. yes. you. All right. Because they were a real heavy metal band. <laughs> wink, the, wink. Yeah, nudge, yeah, nudge. yeah, that's what I – they were. I know they were, right? Actually, well, yeah. They really were because they, 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 were. they actually played all their own instruments and they released an album. So just saying. Yeah, you're right. But that was after the mockumentary. Okay, All right. I'll give you but that. Still. Okay, but no, I, I back to the uh, the the black leather members only jacket. Um, very cool. Um, yeah, I never had a members only jacket though. Yeah, so. I had two. One was just like the regular, well, whatever that fabric was. Right. It was yeah. kind of. A, like parachute. Uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of like, exactly. That's that's what I was thinking of. Like like the parachute pants. Nylon uh, or something. Uh, it's like a nylon text. acetate. Right. Yeah. Which I never had any parachute pants, by the way. Thank God. Some of my friends, most of my friends did. But I clowned on you big time. If you had. Yeah. So. Anyway. <laughs> So that's my that was my first one of my first favorite picks. Now I'm gonna go a little bit older, a little bit younger, I should say. I was younger when I got a couple of my other picks. So okay, but, all right. So we're going back in time as we go. Through yeah, the picks. you know, I, I wasn't sure. I don't really have like an order of these three of like the best, mm. first or last. You know, they're just they're all three very memorable. All right. <laughs> All right, very okay. Cool. Sure. So, um, all right. So, Rose, what about your first pick? Well, as uh, our friend Scott just said, uh, none of my uh, choices are in any type of specific order. Um, they're as I'm remembering them at this very moment in time. Truthfully, um, <laughs> just like quick think of something. God. Um, I was telling the story to my husband the other day. Um, uh, this is more of an experience than a gift. So I guess if you'll allow it, overlord, sure, uh, of course. sometimes we, our experiences can be gifts. 
depending on, you know, how monumental or how how much joy it brings a person. If you catch my drift, you know, like Jesus born in the manger, that's an experience. You know, everybody was there, and it's just like the story's told every year, and you know, that's that brings you a warm feeling, and you know, that's. Well, you know, I, 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 I have to argue the fact that my invite must have got lost in the mail, but go ahead, please. <laughs> so um, yesterday, uh, my grandson and I were uh, sitting in Starbucks. Uh, we were starting our shopping day, and these two people walked in in full leather, and they had helmets. They're taking their helmets off and going to get coffee and whatnot. So... Uh, the husband walks up and the wife's talking to someone and the lady asked her um, nice day for a ride because it was pretty crisp and cold out yesterday. And she's like, Oh yeah. She said it would be, she says, we're doing the uh, toy run, the toys for tots run uh, to Olympia. And, um, She's like, oh, that's so cool. And she's like, yeah. She says it's just like 10,000 bikers, you know, from what I gather. So that used to be just the Hells Angels, but I think a lot more bikers have incorporated that into it. And I just kind of smiled because I remember actually seeing that. In uh, 1985, uh, my kids and I were kind of uh, in between houses so to speak and you know we weren't really sure i just got out of the military we were going to go to live in new york and then the people in new york said no go back to washington it's nothing for you here and we're like okie dokie so so here we are we're in this trailer park in Lacey, and um i'm sitting outside it was fairly mild it wasn't actually christmas but it was that week and so i'm sitting outside and i'm watching and i see this guy and he pulls up to the stoplight and he has some massive Snoopy, plush Snoopy on the back of his motorcycle. Nice. And yeah. I'm going, that is like almost as big as him. That is so cool. And here I am thinking, okay, so, you know, he's making a statement, you know, this is my Snoopy, you know, you know, ringing in Christmas and all that. So then the light changed and he pulls off. And next thing you know, it's like, a hundred motorcycles <laughs> follow him right behind him. And I'm going, whoa, okay, that's a lot of motorcycles. <laughs> and they all had toys. They all had, like, Santa bags, and they had, you know, they had Santa. You, It was Christmas. It was Christmas mm-hmm. on them. Those motorcycles were decked out, I'm telling you. They were just amazing. So I'm like, that is so cool. So I get up, and I start walking towards the street, and I see uh, the manager of the... Um, uh, trailer park coming towards me. She got the mail or something, and I'm like, "Are you seeing this? And is this just me?" Or I'm just like, "Oh no, no, no! This is every year, hon." She says, "This is the Hell's Angels." She says they're doing a toy for tot uh, toys for run. tots. And I was like, "Every year?" She goes, "Yeah, every year." This isn't amazing. I'm like, it's breathtaking actually to see not only something that's so, you know other end of the spectrum that you wouldn't expect to see but to think that they're all doing that in unison you know and they're all gathered together you know for that we are the world moment so to speak and taking toys to kids who don't have them and to this day it's just really kind of chokes me up because i think this is what christmas is all about so yeah throwing it in there that's going to be my my first Christmas gift for the eighties. No, I, I think that's a fabulous pick because it was a great memory for you. you yeah. Know? And it, it, I could just imagine how that, you know, that first seeing that and not knowing that that was kind of like a regular occurrence, how that would be a shocker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And definitely. It, the, the vision of you know this you know motorcycle dude with a big Snoopy, I just love it. It's, it's yeah. Fantastic. It was awesome. Sweet. That was awesome. Yeah, you know, um, my wife and I had Harleys for a little while back in the in the uh, what was that 
early to mid 2000s, um, about mid 2000s. And uh, we were part of a, you want to call them a biker gang, you go right ahead. But we were all about doing good stuff. And it was very uh, emotionally satisfying when you participated in certain runs like that for uh, to help out kids. And mm-hmm. that's a great, great memory that you have of the whole Toys for Tots thing. It's very, uh, it, it's important to uh, let the kids know that that the ones that aren't as fortunate as like myself. I mean, I was very fortunate. Um, some of them, you know, don't have that that same level of uh, oh. Just things that are that are available yeah. to them, and and people giving them stuff like these toys, and I can picture the Snoopy. It's so uh, you you did a really good job of like uh, bringing that to vision, you know. Um, I had I had a Snoopy when I was probably oh man, I think four or five, maybe maybe even a little younger, maybe three, and. It was my favorite. It was my favorite thing to have. I remember it specifically. I mean, I was three or four years old, and I remember the Snoopy. I had it with me so often that the that the head almost fell off because the stitching around the neck was worn out. So yeah. I, you know, lasting it so hard. <laughs> when you're when you when when a group of people is able to give something like that mm-hmm. and and give those memories. And even you, giving you those memories in this situation, yeah. it that's what really – isn't that what Christmas is supposed to be about? Yeah, exactly. Giving, right? Yeah. Yes. I, I just – you know, I, I'm just imagining, you know, the person that ended up with that Snoopy that was on the back of that bike. Oh, I know. If they would that have had the same kind of experience with their Snoopy that you're describing, then that was it. That was definitely the reason to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So that's awesome. All right. So I'm going to move on to my first pick, and I, I I'm hoping it's not a disqualification because I can't place it directly in the 1980s, but I believe it was. Um, it, it, if if it wasn't 1980s, it would have been right before. Uh, mm. and, and what had happened was that. Um, my older sister, uh, she had a, believe it or not, a tendency to uh, pick on me. <gasps> believe it or not, yeah, I know. It's a shocker that siblings would do that. Um, yeah, I, you know, you know, not everybody's all perfect to each other, right? <sighs> <laughs> anyway, so when Christmas comes up, and you know, we over the course of you know growing up, we 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 exchange gifts, you know, uh, my sister and I, and the, um, in this particular instance, my sister convinces me and says, you know what, you tell me what I gave, what you gave me, and I'll tell you what I gave you, um, and I go, okay, well, that, you know, sure, we can do that, you know, and then, you know, that way we, you know, we don't have that anticipation of, you know, each other's gifts, we just wonder what, you know, what we got from the, uh, uh, our parents yeah. or Santa Claus. Uh, and, uh, so I'm thinking, you know, and, and I'm truthful and upfront and I don't even remember what it was that I gave her that year, but I told her exactly what it is that she, what I gave her. She mm-hmm. told me that I was going to get a Kermit the Frog, uh, toy, like a plush doll. Now, back then, Kermit was the man because I was adored with the Muppet movie. Absolutely loved Mm -hmm. the Muppet movie, loved the Muppet show, could do no wrong. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, Christmas morning, I'm opening my gift from her. It's not Kermit. (laughs) She had lied. Liar! Lied to me. And I, and, 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 and I, you know, so of course, you know, I had on the anticipation of getting this Kermit, and it didn't happen. So in this particular case, 
this story of it was a gift that I wanted that I never received because I was told I was getting it. Fast forward now much, much, much later, past the 80s, where I want to say it was 96, 97, there was a Kermit that was re-released, like a 30th anniversary Kermit that mm -hmm. talked and you got the, uh, I think it sang a song like Caribbean Amphibian or whatever. <laughs> she gave me that for Christmas, either 96, 97, as Aww. a way to make up for her lying to me from before. Because it was one of those stories that we carried on throughout the years, you know, like, oh, well, you know, yeah. kept revisiting and, you know, there was, uh, uh, you know, the nudges back and forth. So, but back in the 80s, there was the, I should have gotten my Kermit, I didn't get my Kermit, and so that, that's kind of what was the, uh, the, the, the antithesis of my story. So, it was for the gift that I wanted that I never got, at least not until much, much later. Kermit the Frog. Sweet. Well, that's <laughs> awesome that she made it up to you later on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And with one that talked, too. Yeah, I know, yeah. and the original one didn't. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it was definitely an upgraded model, right? But you know, I mean, obviously, you know, Kermit's still cool, but you know, it didn't mean as much to me. Yeah, I mean, I, I love the the story behind the reason why she yeah. gave me the new Kermit, you know, that new Kermit. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you know, at the same time, it was you know many years of you know distrust around being, you know, her being honest, you know, and that, and that's the way I spun it, of course, when I was picking on her, you know, was, you know, I would bring up the Kermit story, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it was like many, many years, she made it up to me. So, um, uh, rest in peace, Debbie. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, so that, that, that was, that was my first pick. Um, good one, man. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it just, uh, you know, I uh, really, <laughs> you know, really wanted that stupid little Kermit doll. I don't know why. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, very cool. Um, so we're going to go around the horn again. Scott, what's your next pick? Okay, um, like I said, no particular order. Right. But I'm going to go with something a little more fun. I was a huge Star Wars nut at the time. Of course, a lot of kids in the 80s were um i got the jawa sand crawler and i mm -hmm. was so excited and i had so much fun playing with it that was early 80s of course jawa uh. sand crawler yeah do you remember got, that i don't remember that i've got i'm looking it up now though yeah it was the big it was the uh yeah that was the was one from new hope Remote control Right. It was the ridge. Yeah, it was from it was from a New Hope. Uh, you know, R two and C three PO were out in the desert, and they got found by the Jawas, and they took them into this big thing. It was a big, giant, moving. You know, very slow, very slow. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's say freight truck, basically, <laughs> if you want to call it that. But kind of like a Zamboni exactly. with wheels. Yeah, kind of, but bigger. Like huge, mm. and it, like you know, you had storage in there. It was it was a lot of fun. Wow. Uh, I had a lot of the Star Star Wars toys because I was just such a fan of Star Wars. Um, did I mention I like the holiday special? Uh, <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> possibly. Not really sure. I don't know. I'm I'm I'm, I'm, heard, I'm, I'm, heard edit, I'm editing out any talk of <laughs> Life Day. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> so anyway. The Jawa Sandcrawler, and it, that was a. I, I'm not. I'll mention it, and I, I have an honorable mention later. But it was a close. It was, it was really tough to choose between these two things. So anyway, it was the Jawa Sandcrawler, and it came. It was just very cool. It was a remote control. It didn't do much, but you could, you know, it would move slowly across the floor. It was fun. So. Uh, did it come fully loaded with uh, C-3PO and R2-D2? No, you're, we already had those. I, I'm, oh. I, can't, I can't remember if it actually came with a droid. It might have come with one droid. Um, 
I don't know if it was the number, you know, mm-hmm. whatever number the droid was, you know, they all had different identification numbers or whatever type style, model numbers or something. I want to say it did come with one of them. Mm. It did not come with any Jawas. Well, there's a disappointment. I know. Could uh, you buy them separately? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, action, I don't know. Action, action figures sold separately. <laughs> exactly. Come on, it was part of the commercial. <laughs> All right, so I've got, I, sold I, separately. I, I found the catalog entry for this thing. Yes. Uh, and it took two D and two nine volt batteries. Oh, that's weird. It weighed two and a half pounds, mm-hmm. and it retailed for twenty nine dollars and eighty eight cents. That's not bad. Dude. You know what? Did you did you see what they're going for now though? Like a vintage version? No, I did not. About two hundred dollars. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. But you'd need to have that like mint and box though, I think. It, I, I believe it was boxed for two hundred. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't see any figures that come with it from the ad that I'm looking at. Because everything <laughs> says, you know, uh figures sold separately. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, figures shown not included. Uh, not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> so you get this big boxy thing that you can figure. control the remote for yeah. uh, up to twenty feet away. It was it was cool. It's sweet. when you had you know when I had all the other figures that went with it anyway it was you know, it's cool. I always liked the Jawas. I don't know something about them. Uh, my brother and a good friend of his were Jawas for Halloween one year. And uh, my mom made these. Uh, remember, they had like glowing eyes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, my mom made these. Took sunglasses, popped the lenses out, and put little, little mini flashlights on the glasses and made them have glowing eyes. It was really cool. Uh, yeah, it was a good job. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Mom was pretty good with that stuff. So. All right. Anyway. Awesome so pick. that's my my second pick. Very good cool. memories. Yeah, good cool. times. Um, Rose, what about you? Well, um, in the eighties, as most people know, I was already a grown up and I had my own children and family and whatnot. And um, when your children go to school, you anticipate all of the little um, artifacts that they create for you. Uh, because they're instructed by their teachers here, make mom an ashtray and paint it green and give it to her for Christmas. Um, things like that. Um, my favorite gifts, <laughs> I have to admit, I am so corny uh, when it comes to little kid stuff. Uh, my kids would come home and it'd be like they would like hide it in their backpack so I wouldn't see it. But you kind of could see it because there's also a note in there from the teacher to tell you <laughs> that you needed to bring cookies for the, you know, something or other. It was just like, oh, I promise I didn't look, you know, kind of a thing. But um, one year I just got the whole shebang. Um, my two older boys were in school and my daughter hadn't gone to school yet. And she was home with me, so we were doing cookies and whatnot. So... Um, I got the the handprint with the I Love You Mom on it from both boys. And then I got the Cotton Ball Santa. Oh, nice. The construction paper hat. You nice. Know. And uh, I think there was something else. I think my son actually did make me like an ashtray. Uh, the oldest one did. And then my middle son, William, uh, to this day, I have no idea what it is. Uh, it's kind of like, it looks like a cup, but it's like all squished in the middle. Like he was trying to keep it from <laughs> falling over or something. And, um, really you couldn't put anything in it because, you know, the entry was kind of closed up a little. So he, he loved it. He was like, right, you know, uh, mom, this is for you and Merry Christmas. And I'm like, oh, beautiful son. 
He's like, really? Because I couldn't find any red paint that used it all. Because it was gray. It wasn't like any of the Christmas. It was just like a gray color. <laughs> I'm like, well, no, it's perfect because you gave it to me. And they would look at me like, she just like making this stuff up. <laughs> but when you're a parent, <laughs> you just, you take it because it's just like your kid made that for you. And it's just nothing better than having, you know, kid stuff make, you know, given to you that they made with their own two little hands. No, do you, you know, still have all this stuff? I have the handprint and uh, the Santa. And, you know, actually, I do. I have I have uh, all three of those things. Are they? Do you bring them out every year, or are they out all the time? No, actually, they're not out anywhere. Um, <laughs> I have I have them packed away because, um, well, I. I'm a hoarder, so it's not bring anything else out. My husband will shoot me. <laughs> but I have them, I have them tucked away, you know, every so often, you know, and I kind of go looking for stuff and I go, oh, such a sweetheart, you know, and then I put it back because then <laughs> I'll be sitting there all day looking. I go, oh, look, it's fourth grade report card, you know, kind of thing. So, and and I, yeah. I, I think that. You know, my wife and you are probably cut from the same cloth when it comes to stuff like that because our Christmas tree that we actually just put up and when you're, you know, when you've got kids, you know, it that becomes kind of a festivity is getting the tree up and, yeah. you know, then the decorations. And what we've done is over the course of the years, we try to – get maybe one or two different decorations added you know or mm -hmm. ornaments that are added to the tree that are significant for that specific year and mm -hmm. it could be a handprint you know like my yeah. like, like my son we, we you know we brought out the one that has his name in it it had his his handprint you know from it i have no idea what year it was but it was just so small you know, and then, yeah. you know, we're also bringing out all this stuff, you know, for the different phases that the, you know, the kids have gone through, you know, that, yeah. you know, we, when we're pulling these things out, they were like, you know, oh, there's the Dora Explorer phase, or there's the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, High School Musical, or there's the Princesses, there's the, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, while each of them may not have been made, some of them were, but not every one of them yeah. were made, but they were just... You know, you get to relive that memory of that kid's phase that they went through, and mm -hmm. you know that that becomes part of that moment as you're putting the tree together. And then every time you're seeing the Christmas tree, you're like, "Oh yeah, look at that! Oh, I remember that year when we were doing that or whatever. Or we went to that one place and we got a ornament. You know that you know that was a family vacation or something like that." So yeah. I'm with you. There's a lot of those kind of things that you build up, you know, with kids. Yeah. Very cool. You know, so far, I like your picks, Rose. You, you have very sentimental, uh, emotionally driven memories. And that's, You're going to love the awesome. last one, man. Thank you. Yeah. Mine are all very – I'm very material, materialistic. So, I know I'm a sap, so you yeah, know, I just yeah. run with it. So. We'll, we'll see if Rose can make us cry on the third one. So. Oh, boy. <laughs> all right, so – my third pick, uh, and I'm picking backing off of the the one that you were picking on that you used, Scott, uh, mm -hmm. Star Wars. Okay. Um, so what would happen is my mom had a tough time keeping track of what we all wanted. Uh, and so what she would do is she would get that big, colorful JCPenney catalog and have my sister and I mark up the ones that we wanted, uh, you know, for whatever specific gifts that we wanted at the moment. Uh, yeah. And the JCPenney catalog, of course, just had, you know, the plethora of Star Wars action figures and toys and all that kind of good stuff. And, you know, my collection was slowly amassing of the ones that, you know, I had had or I wanted. So I would very easily be able to go to the catalog and circle the ones that I hadn't gotten yet. So uh, around the time that Empire Strikes Back came out, I got the Star Wars Darth Vader collector's case, which I've still got to this day. Yeah. And 
it, it had to be a good, you know, I, I would say 10 to 15 different action figures that I had circled in the catalog that I'd wanted. You know, and I don't remember, you know, all of them at the time. But, you know, I know that there was the Darth Vader. I know there were the the Yoda. I know that, you know, there was the uh, Princess Leia Bespin uniform. You know, I, I, I had all those. I still have them. You know, and, you know, getting that collector's case and getting those action figures, getting them out, put them into the collector's case and then you know taking the little stickers with their names and putting them on the slots that you're putting them in loved it absolutely loved that moment right. and it totally enjoyed you know getting you know just every you know different you know package that you opened up was another one like which one's going to be this one you know yeah. you, you could tell by the feel that oh yeah this is definitely an action figure but which one is it and it was just it was a great memory Nice. Yep. That's awesome. I do remember getting, you know, uh, always waiting for the next figures to come out. Yeah. So that that was always fun. And a rose, it's not your forte, but it was fun. It was a lot of fun. No, I I remember I had Lloyd, so you know, I oh, had yeah. to shop for. You know, we did the uh, Monkey Ward catalog, Sears catalog. You know. We, that would, my God, bring so much hours of silence. You have no idea. I would put them down and so give them that catalog <laughs> and a sharpie, man. They'd be going nice. to town. I want this and I want this. And then, what? you know, my daughter would be like, I need to look too. You know, and she's <laughs> all the Barbies and I'm looking at that stuff going, just circle to your heart's content because OMG. <laughs> <laughs> if you get one thing, that'll be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and those yeah, catalogs were like a... huge. Yeah. Oh yeah, they were, they were thick. They're like four hundred pages. Yeah. yeah, they were God. awesome. Yeah, I, I'm actually really disappointed that you know Toys R Us still has the you know the Jeffrey you know catalog. You know my grandchildren don't get to experience you know the Montgomery Ward and the Sears catalog. It's it's kind of sad because that just yeah that just would even for. Me and as an adult, you know, going through, you know, housewares and linens and things like that, going, oh, I could use one of those. And it would just be, you know, next thing you know, it's like an hour went by. And you're like, what, what was I doing? You know, <laughs> mental shopping. That, that was virtual shopping back then, folks. <laughs> yeah, that was, that, was, that was our version of window shopping. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> At the comfort of your, uh, of your, comfort of your couch. Exactly. Yeah. Your own home. <laughs> I mean, I remember, I remember the smell of those. The smell of the catalog. Yes, like that, like they had a. I mean, yeah. I, I know it sounds weird. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, the shiny papers. Yeah. <laughs> it really was. There was something about it that it had. It, you know, it came out. I think somewhere near Thanksgiving, you know, and it was the wish book. Yeah. It was, the big wish book from Sears. Now that's the one that I remember most. I know Penny's had theirs, and yeah, you can either yeah. go pick one up or you yeah. can have them mail it to you. Yeah, and they were like, I mean, you know, fifteen, twenty pounds each. It was Easy. <laughs> Easy. a lot of. Can you imagine how much ink was used? Oh, to the, print yeah. Things? You look at that in today's terms, and you go, "Holy crap!" Yeah, the that's uh, such a yeah, such a paper waste but you know it's okay it's okay it was totally worth it they knew exactly yeah. what they were doing uh, those oh, yeah. were good times it, it, it sold product it definitely did it did yeah definitely all right so next pick goes to scott back to me huh back to you okay so uh being the music guy that i am um i was on you know i always wanted uh, music stuff too, not not musical instruments, but just uh, ways to listen to music. So I got myself, or I asked for a Walkman, but it wasn't just a Walkman that you carried around. It was a Walkman that had it was uh, it the Walkman itself fit into a set of little speakers, so you could play it. You know, it's kind of like the uh, MP3 players today that you have that you you pop in the slot or you know, plugged oh. it into the 
into the speakers and it has like this, you know, you can, everybody can listen to it instead of just being in your head with the headphones. So this, wow. little, it was a, and I looked up the picture. I was trying to figure out which one it was. And I think it was a Sanyo. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. Nice. Sanyo. And it, and it, you would, you'd hit an eject button on like, it was like a mini boom box and the little Walkman would pop out and you could take that with you and plug your headphones into it. Man. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. That is cool. I didn't even know they had anything like that. Oh, yeah. I'll send you a picture. <laughs> yeah, do that. Thanks. Uh, it's cool that a Walkman would make the list. That is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> it is very, yeah. It's, that, uh, that is so 80s. That says that's 80s. That's 80s love right there. That, yeah. yeah. The Walkman mm. boombox. Now, I, I must digress a little bit. Mm. Sony is actually the owner of the term Walkman, right? <gasps> oh. Yeah. Okay. So yes, it right. was a it was a Sanyo, so it was a portable cassette player. Yes. A pers a personal cassette player, I think it was. Personal cassette what they player. Called it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's like one of those terms that becomes like synonymous with the the item. You know, like yes. you know, product itself. Yeah, yeah. Like, like you know, you, you think you call everything Cool Whip, even though everything isn't Cool Whip. Or Kleenex. Yeah. 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 Kleenex, right? Yeah. yeah. So there's those brands that have just transcended and they're the you know their device or their you know their product has become you know what everybody calls everything else even though they may be getting a different brand yeah and sony yeah. is sony is really an interesting topic if you want a little sidebar they've been fighting for for uh the main recognition for decades it goes back to betamax wow are you serious? Yeah, Sony was the one that wanted to try to get Betamax out there, and it didn't work. VHS succeeded. Everybody went to VHS. Then Sony came out with, uh, you know, like the Walkman, and they, uh -huh. they they got recognized for the Walkman. And then they tried to do with with the uh, the newer technology, digital age of memory cards. They went with the memory stick, the Sony memory stick, and everybody was, they were trying to push everybody onto the Sony memory stick. And then they went. And they were fighting with, uh, I believe they're the ones that came up with, was it Blu-ray or Maybe. HD DVDs? I mean, it was uh, there was a yeah. battle going on there. Yeah. So, and then you know, PlayStation, all that stuff. So, did they do Laserdisc as well? Ooh, that's a good question. Hmm. And Laserdisc was pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was pretty obscure, too. It was. But I remember, yeah. and I know this is a tangent, I remember watching at my grandmother's house, she had a copy of Moonraker Ooh. on Laserdisc, which nice. I, that was like the first thing we popped in when we go to visit grandma. We'd pop in Moonraker and watch Moonraker, Moonraker again. So nice. that's a topic for another day. You know, that's the uh, that's 007 topic that we haven't tackled yet. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, actually, we'll get... laser disc uh, in 1978 was when it was wow. uh, first started. And was it a Sony push? I'm trying to develop by Philips Pioneer. Philips. Uh, ah, uh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't see. Okay. I didn't see that tangent. Yeah. Just call me. Just call me Scott Tangent Compton. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but Walkman, though. Oh, but, but, the, uh, but I carry a Walkman. The cassette player there with your black leather members-only jacket. Members yeah. Only jacket. Yeah. 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 That, that, and my remote-controlled Jawa. Th that, 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 that's a great 80s image right there. Combine yeah. all of those together. If I can dig that picture up, I, I, I'll have to send it to you. Or I'll post it somewhere. All right, cool. I swear, I saw it recently. I can't remember where it was, though. Nice. All right, Rose. Let's see if you can make us cry. <laughs> uh, let me get a hat pin. <laughs> um, actually, I don't really think it's 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 a tough one. It's a toss up. Um, I, it's got no no um, discounting the fact that you had a very lucrative childhood, which was great. Mm -hmm. I admire people that, you know, their parents 
you know, were doing well, the kids benefited from it, you know, and, and they're still fairly level headed. Or you've you've seen the kids out there that are kind of jerks, you know, and mm-hmm. they're like, "Hey, my mom you that me," and you know, well, who cares? Yeah, no, um, I, I I admit I was extremely blessed, extremely yes. blessed, and that's I, good. I, I I recognize it, I know it, I, okay. and and I'm thankful for it, uh, very grateful that I experienced it that way. So, and and you can tell, you can definitely tell that that you are, um. So on the other end of the spectrum, <laughs> uh, my uh, raising my kids uh, in the late nine, late eighties, excuse me, uh, started like right around eighty six, and um, we had to move around a lot, and it was difficult because I wasn't working at the time. So a lot of times um, I worked up until a certain point, and then I stopped working and then I just like took care of my kids full time, which basically meant um, I was on you know, state assistance. So mm. um, a lot of times when you're, you know, receiving, you know, special help from the state, you don't really have a whole lot of money left over to do uh, other things, you know, like uh, luxuries. I was actually told at some point that having a phone was a luxury. So, <laughs> If uh, I was like, excuse me, but that's like a whole nother kettle of fish. But um, so here I am, you know, we just moved into our very first house that was ours, me and my three kids, and we were renting. And um, it was around about that time of the year where we were, you know, going to get ready for the, the winter holidays and everything. And every so often you can go places and get you know, like donations for toys and clothes and food and things like that, which is great. Um, so this particular year, uh, my children and I, um, I had always had, I have to disclaimer, always had all the years that I've ever known Christmas up until this particular point, artificial trees. In the 60s, uh, we had the silver tree with the color wheel. And then in the 70s, you know, the green artificial or whatever. So this particular year, because it was my very first house all by myself, I'm having a live tree. And I'm going to have the biggest live tree ever. So what happened was we went down to this local food bank and they were giving away live trees. And I'm like, this is awesome. So um, I'm not even sure how I got it home because if you recall the tree from Christmas vacation, that scene Mm -hmm. cracks me up every time because that's pretty much how big the tree was that I got. I don't even know how I got it home. And of course, if you're not familiar with how a live tree works, you know, you have to get the little pan to put the water in that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I didn't know that. And then in order to be get in the pan, you have to saw the end off of it and make it even. Mm-hmm. Didn't know that either. So here I am. I've got this massive tree that does not fit in my house. <laughs> it basically fit into my house if I laid it up against the corner of the living room and just kind of went, all right, all you got to do is last me another week and a half. And then you can do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> I don't care what you do. <laughs> so pretty much this poor tree, you know, really didn't get any water. <laughs> I could chop the end off of it, could put it in a pan. And uh, even though I had one, but, you know, too small, didn't measure anything. Like, I don't care. It was the moment I was in it. And uh, so me and my kids are decorating the tree. Now, if mm-hmm. you've ever had children and if you ever decorated a tree, you know, that kids are only going to go up so high, you know, <laughs> yeah. as far as they can reach. As far as you, you can take it a little step further, you know, put star on a tree, that type of thing. So here's this tree laying up against the wall in the corner, and we're just decorating like crazy. And I step back to look at it, and it's like all of these like massive ornaments are all like from mid-tree down. <laughs> On one side. And it's like 
my son's like, we've got to put a star on the tree. I'm like, where? Where are we going to drill a hole in the ceiling and stick star up on top? It's like it has to be at the top of the tree. And I'm like, <sighs> okay. So off we go. Go to the thrift store, find the silver, gold star, you know, whatever. And somehow I managed to jerry rig uh, an actual uh, ornament hook into it from the side. So I could hang it on the front of the tree at the top. So top of the tree is the star. Bottom of the tree is the ornaments. The middle of the tree, we don't care. You know, (laughs) and so people would come over and they'd be like, oh, you have such a lovely. What? Why? Why is it leaning like that? And then just like looking at them going, do I have to explain it? You know, because they look at the bottom and then they go, oh, you don't have it in the back. You want me to get a saw and help you with that? <laughs> nope, it's too late. You know, we've got the tree up. We're good. And you know, it'd be like, okay, oh, have a nice Christmas, you know, <laughs> kind of a thing and leave, you know. But um, needless to say, it it wasn't an actual gift, but it was. It, it, you know, it's that experience, that memory that, you know, you create, you know, with your family. And honestly, that tree stayed there way longer than it needed to. You know, we did eventually take all the ornaments off. I have to admit, January, maybe. That was a hardy tree. It lasted at least till February before, you know, <laughs> stuff wow. started falling off of it. That's impressive. And, yeah. It was, Especially it was when that wasn't getting water. So I know. It, I'm telling you, it was, <laughs> it was a Christmas miracle. But, um, yeah. (laughs) That's the Christmas Christmas branch on steroids is what that is. (laughs) So I had a a friend of mine, uh, eventually, uh, when I got tired of, you know, sweeping up all the, you know, the needles, I, um, I said, is there any way that we could like get rid of this? And, um, he's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. I can take that for you. I'm like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, sure. So, um, the house that we lived in lived next to like a vacant lot. There was a house there, but they took it down. They burned it. or I don't know. They took it out of the... It was weird. Anyway, so the house is no longer, so there's this vacant lot there. So what happened was um, I didn't realize this because I'm trusting, you know, Pollyanna. When you say you're going to take care of something, I believe you're going to do it. Mm-hmm. So apparently what he had done, and I didn't find this out until at least a week later, that he just tossed it over the edge into the vacant lot next to us and went on his way. And uh, my son came home. And he's like, Mom, why'd you throw the Christmas tree off the edge of the porch? And I was like, what? And like, what did you? And so I'm out there looking at that going, oh, Lordy. Okay, well, this is <laughs> going to have to stay with us for a while. But nobody ever said anything and ended up, you know, fixing up the area and somebody ended up moving it. But. Yeah. Hmm. So now with the tree that was leaning in the corner, how did you get the uh, the lights on it? Well, oddly enough, um, you know, you can actually string lights on a tree, you know, from the middle and you come back around to the front and then you swerve and come back around. It can be done. It was done. I'm telling well, you. You don't have to decorate the back of the tree is what you're saying. Yeah, you just put everything goes in the front. The lights go on first, and then the tinsel, and then the ornaments get hung. Well, it's just that I'm used to, you know, when we're putting the lights up, is, you know, going around the tree and circular, you know, a circular motion, getting around and going, you know, uh, you know, top to bottom, you know, stringing yeah. the lights, you know, but I'm yeah. going around the tree in order to accomplish that. But yep. I guess what you're saying is you're just going, you know, a decorative pattern on the side of the tree that you could get to. Well done. Yes. Okay. All right. Visual. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because, honey, one, one nobody getting back behind that tree. <laughs> <laughs> so that meant you had to move it. Yeah. A lot of sap. A lot, yeah. lot of sap. L- lot little, full, <laughs> little full. Looks great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we just, wa- we just watched Christmas Vacation uh, last night and tonight. We watched first half to last night and then continued tonight so uh yeah they brought home the christmas tree and a lot of sap little full yeah. looks great 
I love that you watch in reading the magazine, you know, still got sap on his fingers. Oh yeah. Turn the page. (laughs) It's sticking to his fingers. That's awesome. Great. Yeah. And you know, when we talked about the Christmas movies last week, um, uh, you know, I, I felt like I was drawing blanks on so many of the, the memories from that movie specifically. It's just there as I'm watching, I'm going, I can, I can almost quote every line as it's going through, but yeah. I couldn't remember anything when we were talking about them. <laughs> I yeah, like that's, just how it, that's how it works. It's weird. <laughs> the pressure's yeah. on, man. I can't remember what I'm supposed to talk about. <laughs> yeah, because you want to get those highlights in there, you know, and everybody right, wants right. to talk about. I yeah. couldn't, I couldn't be more excited if I woke up tomorrow and my head was sewn to the carpet. Oh, that's you a know, great line. I could be more surprised. Or Hysterical. Something. And I'm just like, <laughs> can I get anything for Ow. you, Eddie? Drive you out to the middle yeah. of nowhere, leave you for dead. Yeah. <laughs> Love the moose cups with the eggnog. Oh, yeah. Love yeah. I, I just, you know, never had anything like that, but I would expect a family like that to have that, you know, because people did. They had, you know, the punch bowl and the matching cups and all that stuff. And just the, I was like, that's actually a really good idea. You know, moose, mm-hmm. moose head cups. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, well, you know, and well, that was trip. Wally World. Yeah, it's a tribute to Wally World. Right. Along yeah. With, uh, See? Which I don't know if the shout Tasman- out from the first one. So. Yeah, the Tasmanian Devil coffee mug at work was kind of a, yeah. a shout out to uh, amusement parks in a way. Because, you know, that's yeah. uh, Six Flags was all about the Warner Brothers and all that stuff. So. Yeah. I know they weren't Wally World, but similar, yeah. similar idea. But that it's just the whole thing is so funny. It's such a great movie, and um, I love your story about the Christmas story tree. You have you have brought like the soft the 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 warm fuzzies to the podcast tonight. Rose. The warm fuzzies. Yeah. Hashtag warm fuzzies. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Feel the love. Feel the love. Yeah. We are the world. <sighs> and I'm going to ruin it. <laughs> oh, okay. What's your last pick? Uh, I, just, I, I, I feel like I should have went before Rose is what <laughs> I feel like. Because we would have ended with warm and fuzzies and I'm just going to ruin it. I'm just going to take a gun to that moment and just kind of. Blow that tree out of the water. <laughs> or, or or light it on fire, like, you know, uh, uh, yeah. Goal, uh, what was his name? Yeah, Whoever Uncle. did. We, we could, Uncle Lewis. Uncle Lewis. Because, Lewis. We, because yeah. if Rose gives us that warm, fuzzy love moment, and Dave's going to actually talk about S-E-X. Oh no! <gasps> no, yes. you're not. Really? While wow, you're going there? I, I, that's the one I had ready for my third pick. Wow. And oh. now was I, it? No, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Is this really sex or is it electric sex in the window? It's electric <laughs> sex in the window. Yes, I guessed it. <laughs> yeah, no, it, no, it's not. It doesn't have anything to do with a Christmas story. Uh, what? Yeah, the, really? The movie. But it's the the vision of, I guess, what that represented. It, you, bear you, bear, you bear with this, me on did this. You clear this pick with Patty first. <laughs> I didn't know her in the eighties. Oh oh. No, and, like and, I said. And, and no, no, like no, I no, said. No, no, did no. you clear this? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I I don't recall how exactly. <laughs> The conversation happened. I don't remember how the situation presented itself, but somehow the Christmas of 1983 in my stocking, Hmm. I received the 30th anniversary edition of Playboy magazine. Get out. No, you didn't. Now. Here's what I'm willing to do as a a very responsible host of wow. 80s Reboot Overdrive. I didn't remember the exact one that I had received. I just remembered that it was in the 80s somewhere. I had received 
this in my stocking. And I was like, well, you know what? I, I'm curious because I want to look up the one that I received so that I can remember the year and I can remember, you know, the uh, cover. Yeah, like the cover. Okay. And, okay. and, and, and well, so let's just go with let's just no, go with no, the cover. No, yeah. No, so <laughs> what I did was I then Googled 1980s holiday edition Playboys, and I didn't mm. find the one that. I had found because uh, the one that I gotten because in that particular in 1983 the uh, December one was mm-hmm. Joan Collins on the cover and I don't remember getting that one but there was a one that was just you know it just had the Playboy emblem on it and I guess it was the 30th edition one and I guess maybe it was released early enough for me to get it for that Christmas mm-hmm. I'm guessing but mm-hmm. what I ended up doing was by doing this Google search I was able to find the playmates that you know the the, the playmate that was uh, um, predominant for that mm. issue the okay. centerfold yeah the centerfold and okay. it was uh, Miss January Penny Baker uh, and once I found her I was like yep that's the one I received so um, in this particular case I've completely destroyed now this image that we had of this wonderful story that Rose shared. Oh, and the now innocence we have, is lost. Innocence uh-huh. is lost. Yeah. Have, the innocence is lost. And we have, <laughs> in this case, it Dave would have been 13-year-old Dave with the 30th anniversary Playboy in his stocking. Oh. Yeah. And, and like I said, I don't remember the premise, but somehow Santa Claus gave me this um, and I'm sure it was something a conversation that I had initiated I'm guessing I would think so yeah and I just and it happened it, it, it happened that that was there and so I was like I, I remember that vividly you know that that was I don't even know what else I got that year but in the stock, I wouldn't either. <laughs> I'd be a little distracted myself <laughs> at 13 years old. Yes. And, um, you know, I, I mean, I could probably quote something about, you know, from uh, the movie we're talking about, Vacation, using a magazine. I don't know. But anyway, um, <laughs> did I go there? Well, I, I don't know if I really want to go there. But no, you can't have these. I use them all the time. <laughs> Oh, but anyway, that's uh, and I, I'm sorry that I ended after Rose. I I, I should have went before Rose. I know I should have. I, look, a, looking back fam- on this, this is a family show. I know, and it's and it's Christmas. Yes, I know, and, 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 and maybe maybe you, some, and maybe some of one, our older listeners. This is well, one of the best stories I've heard in a long time, though. This is this is awesome. <laughs> I'll agree with it. Yeah, that out trumps my poor sad tree any day. And and I'm just imagining that, you know, when... Yeah, but we're comparing two different things here. We're talking about Star Trek versus Star Wars, okay? Right, right. Mm-hmm. Well, well, you know, what I'm just imagining different is Different experiences, that... and they're both awesome. Yeah, I love them both. I, I, what I'm just imagining is our older listeners will probably maybe even Google Penny Baker, January 1983, and, uh, you know, and see what I'm talking about, you know? Uh, or I'm sorry, it would have been January 1984. But uh, yeah. yeah, just uh, just so you can get that uh, you know image of uh, you know that I've got to close this Google page. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. the cookies are piling up. <laughs> I'm sorry, what were we talking about? <laughs> yeah, cookies. <laughs> oh yeah, Walkman. Okay. Um, I'm back on. I'm back on track now. All right. Back on track. Yeah. Yeah. Walkman <laughs> tree in the corner. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Nothing what, to see here, walk- guys. Move on. Wait. What's what's a Walkman? Oh. <laughs> uh, walkman. Uh, cassette player. Uh, yeah. Personal, personal cassette, cassette, player. cassette player. Yeah. There you go. All right. So those were our um, our memories of our top three '80s gifts, Christmas gifts. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Did you guys have any quick honorable mentions before we close this out? No. Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, my other Star Wars pick was um, 
It was the star, uh, the Death Star play set. Ooh. Yeah, it was. It, it was like a, a section of the Death Star, and it came with a little um, a garbage um, compactor at the bottom, and it came with a little, you know, whatever the creature was that was in there. I know it has a name. Can't remember yeah. what it's called, but there's a creature in there, and then they had these little tiny sponge pieces that went in the thing to look like junk and and it had the uh, the gun turret on top that would that would explode and break apart and it was very cool so it was it was between that and Jawas and I think it was two separate years because uh, I think the Empire the the Death Star didn't come out until like the Empire Strikes Back came out so it was a little right. bit afterwards and, and I think that's a very inappropriate toy the Death Star playset. Inappropriate. Yeah. Very inappropriate. There was a lot of stormtroopers that had lost their lives, and that just glorified the, the, the loss of life. So I don't approve of that. <laughs> okay. So, you know. Uh, I, I do like, I, I like the, uh, your gift much better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> funny. <laughs> so funny. Such men over yes. here on this side of the <laughs> <laughs> on this side of the conversation. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Rose. Yeah, hey, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, Rose, you had a mention that you wanted to bring up. Uh, uh, there was actually, if I want to do the shout out for the people that provided me with. Um, oh yeah, please do that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I have uh, some too. Remind right. me after you're done. I have some shout outs. Maybe. On Facebook. Okay, go. <laughs> go. Might. Yes. Uh, at Tristan Lofting. Uh, oh, he yes. Out, uh, in 1987, he received a massively huge Lego set. Nice. One year, cool. year for Christmas. And I thought it must be like ginormous because, you know, usually use massively and huge in the same sentence unless it was the size of a city block. So. I thought, kudos, well done. Yeah, it was more of a Lincoln it took Log to guy put it myself. To... Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know how long it took him to put that together, <laughs> but he might still be putting it together. I don't know. <laughs> Legos take forever. Oh, I loved it's Legos. Cool. We got a lot. We had a lot of Legos when we were younger. Yeah, my kids did too. My kids had a lot of Legos. Um, and I like the Duplo box for my daughter too, because mm-hmm. she always wanted to help. And then it ended up, you know, it would always end up going in her mouth, and then they'd have to bring the Lego out, and no, you can't have the people, and then okay, just there, take that, <laughs> <laughs> go play with that. And then my husband had a really good one. He's um, at Tartan underscore Dragon mm-hmm. on Twitter, and uh, he was, let's see, he said he was. 15 or 16. Now he's from Scotland, just so you know. You know people don't know that, but um, they're very practical gift, you know, gift, gifts there and stuff. And, um, but I thought this one was pretty awesome because I, I, while I am not a man, I would think this would be like a rite of passage gift for a young man, like I mentioned before. And he got uh, the Phillips rotary razor oh and yeah the gift, the gift set with uh-huh. shaving accoutrements and uh, that is kind of a rite of passage that's a good way of yeah, putting it definitely manly, uh, uh-huh. aftershave type of things that went with it. and I went wow that's that's a big deal I said um, so did you have a beard because he has a beard now and you know since I've known him so did you have a beard back then he goes no I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I wanted, uh, but I was gonna follow up with, so you just got the razor because you know you're a man now. You're gonna need to shave, and I'm assuming that's probably, oh yeah, what it was. Totally. Cause like I said, I don't know because I'm not a dude. So yeah, so I thought that was a really cool Christmas gift to get at 15, 16 years old. That is, it's a very, a very is really is a, a rite of passage. It's a coming of age thing. That's very cool, yeah. very very cool. 
And, and I just Googled that just because I was curious. The vintage 80s Norelco Speed Razor Rotary Electric Shaver model HP1620B is uh, on eBay is for sale for $134.99. Sweet. Wow. So and that was a Holland made one. Yeah. Yeah. I brand, brand new unopened. I purchased <laughs> those before for you know men, and in my life I prefer brawn. That's just me, because the Norelcos have a tendency to jam up too easy for some reason. I don't know. But that's just my experience. Not that I've ever used one. Huh. Just, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> All right, so were there any more shout outs? I no, have from, Scott sorry. Has several. I have a few. Okay. From okay. uh let me see if I can find them real quick here. Oh here we go. Um let's see. Uh, uh Kevin Long, another podcaster from um Southgate Media. He has his own show, Kevin Long Show. Uh it is Tickets to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles concert. Whoa. Yeah, I don't know what that was. I didn't know they had a concert, but apparently they did at the time. Um, a buddy of mine that I used to work with, this guy Matt, or ZD Smith, uh, he got a stereo with a turntable and dual cassette and about a dozen vinyl LPs, and one of them was Billy Joel's Greatest Hits, Volume 1 and 2. Uh, another friend, Kathy Farley... Uh, the 45 record of We Are the World. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that one jumped out at me. I'm so glad I was able to use it. Uh, another friend of ours, Chantal, uh, James Taylor, uh, a pair of pink Converse high tops. Very nice. cool. So, um, yeah, that's about it. That's what I got. Nice. So I was so glad that somebody threw out We Are the World. That's awesome. Yeah, that, that is definitely a great 80s Christmas memory. Mm-hmm. And, and all of those concerts where they were trying to, you know, recognize the, uh, you know, the people that were starving in the world and, you know, trying to, you know, uh, raise awareness and money. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, the 80s were great for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hands Hands Across America, We Are the World. Um then the Live Aid. Live Aid. Farm yeah. Aid. Uh, Farm yeah, Aid. Farm yeah. Aid, very good. I think the Us Festival was some kind of fundraiser too, but I can't. <laughs> yeah, that was the uh Wozniak one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well very cool stuff. I appreciate all the shout outs, man. I mean everybody uh contributing to a uh a wonderful topic. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and then let me get up the Google Doc again so we can talk about our participants once again for the podcast crossover, mm-hmm. for the blog crossover. Uh, so once again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have some blogs that are doing a cross-promotion with us where we're talking about the same topic. So when this post, their content should be either posted or right around where we're going to have it linked together with our blog, which is – southgatemediagroup.com slash 80s reboot blog but the ones that are participating rediscover the 80s dot com they're going to have a blog entry and a podcast uh, Ouija midget dot wordpress dot com uh, once again it will be linked to ours so you'll be able to follow through all the different blog entries for this same topic killerkitch dot wordpress dot com and return to the 80s dot wordpress dot com so these people once again, like us, have this uh, appreciation for the 1980s, and we brought up the idea of having this topic of our favorite 80s gifts, and they were all in. They were like, oh yeah, let's do it. So I'm just so excited to read what they're going to have uh, to share um, that we can go through and uh, uh, see. And I don't know if if you guys did what I did, but with the uh, the favorite '80s cars thing, I was going into each of the blog entries, and if they had the option to like comment, you know, I would write comments based on what they wrote. Um, so a lot of great interaction with those guys. 
That's awesome. I looked at a couple of them, but I didn't really, I didn't comment or any, do anything like that. I was just kind of skimmed through them. But very cool. All right, so that is this episode. Uh, let us do our social media credentials. Rose. I am at 80s Music Girl on Twitter, 80s Music Girl on Facebook, and 80s Music Girl on Instagram. All right, Scott. I am 80s Auto Reverse on Twitter and at Scott's Eye on Twitter also. And you can find me on Facebook at 80s Mixtape Auto Reverse. All right, and I am Dave. I take care of my 80s reboot accounts, and that's uh, Penny Baker. I'm sorry. Sorry, my mind was stuck somewhere else. Um, <laughs> nice. uh, on Twitter, that's at 80s Reboot. Uh, and Tumblr, that's uh, 80sreboot.tumblr.com. You can email us at 80sreboot at gmail.com. I gave you the web address of our blog, but once again, that's southgatemediagroup.com slash 80sreboot blog. Uh, I feel like I'm missing one. Twitter, Tumblr, email, blog. Huh, should be it. All right, uh, so with that, we appreciate you all reliving the 80s with us, and have a very merry holiday season. Thanks, you too. Yep. Bye, everybody. All right. Bye. We hope you've enjoyed this show. This podcast is part of the 80s Reboot Overdrive channel on Southgate Media Group. You can follow us on Facebook on the 80s Reboot group page. We're also on Twitter and Tumblr at 80s Reboot. We invite you to check out all the wonderful podcasts and blogs available at southgatemediagroup.com. And thank you for reliving the 80s. How did that happen? That happened because it's Christmas Eve, I'm telling you! I'm not crazy. It's Christmas Eve. It's, it's the one night of the year when we all act a little nicer. We, we, we smile a little easier. We, 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 we cheer a little more. For a couple of hours out of the whole year, we are the people that we always hoped we would be. It's a miracle. It's really a sort of a miracle because it happens every Christmas Eve. And if you waste that miracle, you're going to burn for it. I know what I'm talking about. You have to do something. You have to take a chance. You, you do have to get involved. There are people that are having, having trouble making their miracle happen. There are people that don't have enough to eat. That, there are people that are cold. You can go out and say hello to these people. You can take an old blanket out of the closet and say, here, you can make them a sandwich and say, oh, by the way, here. They, they, I get it now. And if you, if you give, then, you, then it can happen. Then the miracle can happen to you. It's not just the poor and the hungry, it's, it's everybody who's got to have this miracle. And it can happen tonight for all of you. If you believe in this spirit thing, you, you, the miracle will happen and then you'll want it to happen again tomorrow. You won't be one of these bastards who says Christmas is once a year and it's a fraud. It's not. It can happen every day. You've just got to want that feeling. And if you like it and you want it, you'll get greedy for it. You'll want it every day of your life and it can happen to you. I, don't, I believe in it now. I believe it's going to happen to me now. I'm ready for it. Uh, and uh, it's great. It's a good feeling. It's, it's really better than I felt in a long time. I, I, I'm ready. Have a Merry Christmas, everybody. Did I forget something, big man? God bless us, everyone.